Okay. Okay. So, yeah, welcome everyone. I'm very glad to receive today for the second uh, webinar of the uh, this uh, winter uh, web webinar series, uh, Valérie Cluzol and Frédéric Leclou. And they are going to talk about uh, research they are undertaking currently on the, uh, the relationship uh, to uh, with death and death rituals of an immigrant population in, in France, uh, from North Africa. And uh, I think that the, the common thread, if we had to draw a common thread between the previous webinar and this one, is it's about the use of, uh, of alternative method uh, uh, to, for, which allows the, the researchers and the uh, uh, to, to confront this extremely difficult issue, which is the one of death and relationship to death. And last time with Alessandro, we talked about the, the, the possibility of paintings to, for the, 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 the research to overcome its personal subjectivity and the, the difficulty he had facing this, uh, these issues. But here it's a bit different angle because uh, Valérie and Frédéric have used uh, filmmaking as a way to confront the, 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 the uh, interviewee's sub subjectivity uh, with regard to this same issue and to elicit uh, a, a word or voice uh, regarding this, uh, this, uh, this issue. Right, so um, without further, further ado, uh, I will uh, leave uh, Frédéric launching the, the teaser of, of his documentary and then they will introduce themselves. Can everybody see this black screen? Mm -hmm. So you tell me if you can get the sound as soon as it starts, please. Great. Shall I start? Yeah, or, like, uh, go ahead, please. Or, peut-être, uh, Valérie, c'est mieux que tu commences. OK. Bonjour à tout le monde et merci, uh, Thomas, pour cette invitation. Donc, je vais parler français et Thomas va traduire. Je suis désolée. <laughs> euh, donc, uh, pour me présenter, je suis, uh, je suis chercheur doctorante au, à l'Université Lumière à Lyon 2. Et donc, je travaille effectivement sur les ritualités funéraires et les enjeux de l'inhumation. Euh, et donc, euh, ma démarche euh, s'inscrit plutôt dans une démarche ethnographique et biographique. Euh, et donc, ce film, effectivement, fait partie euh, de mon dispositif d'enquête, partie intégrante, à la fois comme outil euh, de production de données, euh, outil d'analyse et aussi outil de, de, de médiation. Et donc, à travers ce, ce documentaire, nous avons essayé avec... Euh, Euh, Frédéric, de, de, de montrer la complexité de, de ses choix. Euh, voilà, notamment des choix qui euh, charrient des enjeux identitaires et, et politiques euh, importants. Oh, yeah, you, you want me to... Uh, just to sum up uh, what you've just said, so you, you are currently undertaking a PhD 
research at the University of Lyon 2. And your work is focusing on, on the uh, on rituality and the um, uh, death rituals uh, among this uh, North African population. And you've extensively used uh, filmmaking and photography as a tool for the production of data, of course, but also as a, a tool for mediation between yourself and your interviewees and a tool for analysis. And what your, your, your aim is to investigate the choices regarding to rituality and this, how these choices are linked to uh, identification and identity, uh, 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 identity choices among this population. Okay, and um, I'm Frédéric Leclou. I'm, um, um, I'm a photographer. I um, was born in Brussels, but I, I live in the south of France. And um, I'm a member of uh, a photographer's agency based in Paris called Vue Agency. And um, uh, I've been interested to work with, um, uh, in, in, in collaboration or in partnership with uh, other um, uh, um, other languages to, to for a while to try to um, to cope with uh, what I find is the fundamental uh, weakness of photography when it comes to uh, documenting the world and to say something about the world. Um, and I'm also um, uh, an associate editor at Le Bec en l'air, uh, which is a, a, a photo book publisher based in Marseille. And um, what else? Uh, I, um, I've been working for the past 25 years in Nepal. And um, this is, I'm, I'm just saying this because this is going to be important when it comes to how, how we met and why we met. And uh, after working in Nepal for a long time, I also worked with Nepalese uh, uh, expatriates and migrant workers. Uh, expatriates in the UK and migrant workers in Qatar during the, the building of the infrastructures for the coming world football world cup okay that's uh, that's it for my presentation thank you all right so uh, Valérie do you want to uh, tu veux commencer le la présentation et tu tu me fais signe quand tu veux que je traduise alors, alors d'une part, c'est plutôt euh, Frédéric qui va lancer ah, euh, des extraits, qui va démarrer la, la présentation. Donc, moi, je terminerai dans l'ordre. D'accord. Et, euh, et, et puis, ce que j'ai prévu, j'ai vraiment euh, fait des petits blocs. De... Alors, j'ai un peu écrit, ça va être un peu, euh, un peu écrit, parce que sinon, ça va déborder, pour que tu puisses traduire euh, plus facilement des petits, des petits morceaux de, des idées, quoi. D'accord. Point merci. par point, voilà. D'accord. So, I'm going to uh, show you two... Uh, excerpts of the film. I, I uh, subtitled them for on uh, on the occasion of this webinar uh, because they uh, they they had there were no subtitles on the film so far. Uh, so we're gonna see this two excerpts for ten minutes, and then I'm gonna introduce um, more the, uh, uh, the the technical and um, collaborative approach of. Uh, this creation, how we met, why we wanted to work together, and, and um, um, how we created this, uh, this movie by uh, combining the, both our languages. So I'm going to turn off my, I don't know if I must turn off my mics. I, I, I don't know if, you, if, if I do this, if you will hear the sound, you'll tell me. Je crois qu'on n'entend pas le son là.
Sorry. Uh, we can't hear the sound. Oh shit! Sorry, I'm part of. So, so um, <laughs> I don't know why. So I'm uh, I'm gonna uh, try with the mic on. Um, sorry about this. So during the teaser, you 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 couldn't hear the sound either. Uh, it was a bit faint. It was a bit faint, but uh, we could hear something. Um, I'm gonna... Dans le teaser, on n'entendait pas très bien. Ok, ok. Euh, Est-ce que ceci va mieux Il nous a quitté il y a deux ans, je crois à l'âge de 92 ou 94 ans. Euh, voilà, voilà, un grand-père charismatique. Charismatique, toujours, euh, toujours bien sapé. Euh, et c'est... C'est son mystère, c'est son silence qui, est, qui, qui en dit le plus sur la personne. Moi, j ai, j ai, j ai, il ne m'a pas forcément beaucoup parlé avec les mots, mais il m'a beaucoup plus parlé avec les gestes. Et ce qui est curieux, euh, dans l'organisation de la, de, de la mort, euh, je ne sais pas, c'est chez nous, voilà, le truc chez nous qui qui ne peut rien dire du tout, qui veut tout dire à la fois, qui veut dire est-ce que c'est chez nous euh, les personnes issues d'immigration maghrébine, chez nous les musulmans, chez nous les arabes, chez nous les berbères, bon enfin bref, chez nous, je dis juste chez nous, et chez nous, bah, on fait un repas, je... un repas le, la, les jours après sa mort. Voilà, et euh, un moment de fête, un moment de, où beaucoup de personnes euh, viennent nous soutenir, nous soutenir. Et, euh, et voilà, entre euh, tristesse, et parfois des rires, euh, des souvenirs. Et quelques jours après, deux ou trois jours après, euh, il, est parti, euh, il est parti se reposer euh, en Algérie. Il s'est fait, fait enterrer, il met en Algérie. Et ça a permis euh, et pas mal de choses. Ça a permis à, à mes oncles euh, de retourner en Algérie. Après, euh, après 30 ans, 30 ans de, de coupure. Et je crois qu'ils ont pris une belle claque chacun. La terre d'origine, ouais, la, 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 la vraie terre d'origine. That's it for the first excerpt, and I'm going to launch the second one. Was it fine for, for the, the sound level? Yeah, perfect. Okay, thank you. Une fois qu'on enterre les gens ici, c'est une coupure. On coupe carrément le, 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 les liens on coupe avec le Maroc. C'est-à-dire qu'on a tout ici. On a nos enfants, nos, pas, nos, nos femmes, nos enfants, le, les petits-enfants et tout ça. Mais on n'a rien, personne là-bas. Alors, c'est-à-dire, si par exemple, il y a mon père, comme maintenant, j'ai mes enfants, quand ils vont là-bas, ils vont au cimetière pour aller voir le. le, le... Ils ont quand même un lien. Que on sait que mon père est encore là-bas, ma mère est là-bas, mais ma famille. Alors, il y a toujours ce, ce lien. Il y a toujours cette, cette, cette attache. Quoi, quand... Alors, si par exemple, on commence moi à dire comme ça, euh, ça y est, moi, je, je m'intéresse, mon fils, là, là, ça y est, plus rien, on n'a plus rien à, à voir le Maroc, sauf le, 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 la nationalité, le, le, comme on dit, marocain, français marocain. Quoi. Avec la bouche, mais autrement. Il n'y a que le passeport, c'est le même pas. Quand on, fait la, on prend la nationalité, même la double, double nationalité, on a un passeport français. Il n'y a plus rien qui, qui s'attache. C'est la coupure euh, totale. C'est pour ça que moi, quand je défends, je dis quand même, il faut quand même qu'on garde un lien euh, entre nous. On est là, on est pro. Ce pas parce que. Je me sens pas bien. Si, la France, elle est, pour moi, c'est 
C'est vraiment, j'aime bien, c'est un pays pour moi, c'est mon pays, c est, c est pas, sauf que il y a quand même le, le Maroc, il, a, il y a mes, mes parents, mes grands-parents, mes racines, mais on garde quand même un peu de, un respect pour eux, puis il ne faut pas pour que les... J'ai réfléchi, et euh, c'est vrai qu'on c'est pas une question qu'on se pose tous les jours, quoi. C'est sûr, c'est déstabilisant, mais en même temps, ça interpelle fortement. Euh, je me dis, au fait, aujourd'hui, voilà, les personnes qui, euh, qui, qui, sont, euh, voilà, qui sont enterrées en Algérie et leurs enfants sont ici, euh, combien de fois leurs enfants vont les voir même en état normal, même ici pour un Français ou pour combien de fois euh, on va voir, on va, je veux dire, sur les tombes de nos, nos, nos proches dans l'année. Peut-être une fois. Euh, C'est vraiment la proximité par rapport à mes enfants ici. J'ai vécu ici, je fais le choix que ça se passe ici, que j'ai une sculpture ici en France. Ça se passe ici. Euh, incinéré ou pas, bon, après, c'est aussi une question d'approche de, de, plutôt culturelle, mais ça, je le dis de mon vivant, parce que j'ai connu aussi des situations où la volonté de la personne, c'est de se faire incinérer, mais finalement, euh, quand tu as le poids de la famille de son côté, euh, par rapport surtout aux couples, les couples mixtes, ça pose beaucoup de souffrance, et voire même des déchirements au niveau de la famille, alors qu'il s'agit d'un quelqu'un qui, qui est parti, quoi. Et, et ça, euh, comment le régler en, en anticipant euh, aussi C'est des questions importantes à régler. C'est pour ça que je dis que peut-être pas d'incinération, mais que euh, parce que ça renvoie aussi à une incompréhension par rapport à ma famille en Algérie, mais surtout pas vis-à-vis -vis de mes choix en tant qu'individu, mais surtout vis-à-vis -vis de l'intégration ou plutôt de, euh, de, de ce lien qui doit persister entre mes filles et leur futur, avec leur famille en Algérie. La mémoire de la personne, pour moi, elle est à 80% ici en France, aujourd'hui. Donc je l'accepte. Donc je dis, je suis de culture musulmane, je ne, je ne remets pas ça en question, mais le choix de mon, mon, je veux dire, mon départ, ben, si ça me regarde moi. Maintenant, au jour d'aujourd'hui, euh, je voudrais être enterré euh, là-bas, au pays. Ici, non. Parce que j'ai vu les complications euh, qu'il y a eu, euh, qui a, euh, qu a eu en France avec euh, le décès de ma soeur. Euh, et puis, euh, voilà. Et puis, euh, et pareil, euh, euh, je reviens un peu au discours de, de ma mère qui disait. Euh, euh, Là-bas, au moins, on entendra chanter les versets du Coran. Quand je vois les cousins et cousines qui ont perdu des familles, des parents et tout, il n'y a pas la même souffrance que, que, que nous, enfants qui, sommes, qui avons vécu en Occident. Il y a, il y a un autre rapport, c'est pas... Parce que je vois, quand j'ai perdu mes deux parents, Ouais, moi j'étais dans ma peine, j'étais dans, même dans mes délires, quoi, on va dire, parce que bon, bah, c'est quand même euh, on perd un, une maman, on perd un papa, et puis euh, on devient orphelin. Au moment où j'ai dû rentrer euh, en 2016, euh, bah, la pensée était pour mes parents. Quoi. Je m'en vais, je vous laisse. Oui, oui, oui. Ouais. Il y a eu ça, c'est vrai que ça, je l'ai dit. Je l'ai dit, je, je, je l'ai dit de vive voix, je dis, je m'en vais, je vous laisse. Voilà. Thank you for.
watching and listening. So, um, it's already been 15 minutes, so I'll take like 10 minutes to speak about it and then let Valerie um, start afterwards. Is that fine? Sure, yeah. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> just uh, where does this film come from? Uh, oh, it, it, it's uh, um, this collaboration is, has been the result of a, a request by and by Valerie. I uh, worked in 2016 in Qatar uh, and in Nepal to um, document the moral and personal and social and societal impact of the Nepalese migrations to the Gulf. And I, um, I did a, a conference about this, um, this work in uh, the Nieps Museum in uh, Chalon-sur-Saône, where Valérie lives, uh, on her invitation in 2016, um, at the, uh, on the occasion of the uh, um, Social Solidarity Week, La Semaine de la Solidarité Inter Internationale uh, that year. And um, um, so I, I took pictures of Nepalese in um, Nepalese women in their villages, and then I uh, went to Qatar to um, uh, find their very own men in their camps. And Valérie, Valérie was um, uh, interested by this approach, and she talked to me about her uh, PhD research and her will to produce a film about it. And she want, she asked me if I would accept to um, do this film with her which I did for the reason I already mentioned, because I've al always uh, been very interested in uh, collaboration between languages. So, um, what we did, uh, why, why did I uh, accept is, is, is the, the, the main thing is that for, from the very beginning, we believed, um, uh, we understood that each of us had um, a common vision of how to how to deal with reality, how to um, uh, how to deal with this this kind of experience, like uh, the the the, um, the organization of funerals and the approach to to death, and this this vision is made of uh, respect and honesty, but it's also very important that each of us uh, had. Um, believed that um, the, the tool of the other, when it comes to questioning and understanding uh, uh, the reality, was equally re relevant. Uh, photography and uh, social, social science are two different tools to address and to document and to question uh, the world. Uh, and for us, from the very beginning, there was absolutely no hierarchy between these two languages, and that's that was very important. Um, so very soon, uh, some kind of complicity and collusion uh, arose between us, and there was never many question about. Uh, um, uh, I mean, like power struggle <laughs> question between us because we were equally. Uh, respectful of the language of the other. So uh, more technically, what um, uh, what we did is Valérie invited me to Chalon to uh, meet the first witness, testimonies. Comment est-ce qu'on dit les témoins? On dit witnesses dans votre langage? Je ne sais plus. Witnesses. Witnesses, okay. And testimonies um, and témoignages. Uh, so we, um, the first when I met them, uh, Valerie, she had a very long relationship with these persons uh, because of, thanks to her uh, PhD work with them and, and uh, her research. So she introduced me uh, among them at a very slow pace. At the very beginning, I didn't come with a, a camera and um, I just met them and try to understand uh, um, how I could um, um, 
uh, respect their world uh, when uh, it, when the time would come to make the film. And uh, so the, the woman we see at the end of the second excerpt, Turia, she's, um, the first time I saw her, it was just her, Valerie, and her pictures. She, um, um, she opened in front of us uh, a suitcase full of the pictures of the, her parents that she hadn't opened since the demise uh, uh, of her parents. So it was very moving. And this kind, this type of emotion uh, created a, a, a link between us and uh, that was made of trust and confidence. So you, 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 you have seen three different uh, regime of images uh, in this film. Uh, family pictures that we treat as documents. Uh, I mean, they are, they are not cropped, never. They are just put on a black um, background. Um, of course, the uh, filmed interviews that were uh, filmed by uh, a cameraman from the Nieps Museum. And then um, uh, you see also contemporary pictures that I took in, Ch in Chalon especially in this uh, in the second excerpt in the um, uh, in the Muslim area of the cemetery of Chalon Soson, one of the cemeteries of Chalon Soson. There's one more um, regime of image that is not displayed in these two excerpts is um, uh, also the the old pictures of Chalon that I I went and collect in the uh, in the archives of the museum that also play an important role in, uh, in the movie. So, um, I don't know if, if, if you know this um, uh, very interesting article by uh, Howard Baker. Uh, it's called, in French title was uh, Les photographies disent la vérité, do, do, do photographs tell truth? And in this uh, article, he questions uh, the idea of truth and, and, and he proposed uh, a very interesting approach to this. Uh, he gets rid of the question of truth because there is no truth in photography. And this is what I believe. Uh, uh, and he said a much more, much more interesting approach is just to ask a picture uh, to uh, what kind of question it might answer. And this is exactly what we did for each of these different regimes of uh, photographs. What kind of, what part of the, uh, our, our world, what part of what we want to uh, transmit will each of the picture uh, take in charge? And that exactly, uh, that's exactly what we, what we did. And, um, but this has to be done uh, with one rule uh, uh, in mind, which is the absolute prohibition of illustration. Uh, this is based on what uh, Robert Bresson, the French cinematographer, has explained and developed in his uh, famous notes on cinematographer. Uh, and um, Bresson always advocates the uh, absolute interdiction, absolute prohibition of uh, illustration. By illustration, we, he means and I mean a text that the, the voice should not and illustrate what the picture says and the picture should not illustrate what the voice says because otherwise they just uh, um, annihilate each other and kill the meaning and um, so the, the, the few um, uh, pictures uh, photographs you say in the film are quite representative of this uh, of this approach the the pictures when Mehdi speaks in the first excerpt we don't we don't say uh, who is on the uh, on the pictures we see when Medi speaks. Uh, we don't say that it is uh, his uncle. I don't even know if it's his uncle. It's probably his uncle. When he say it's my uncle, uh, uh, were uh, at shock when they went back to uh, Algeria. But we don't say it. We don't tell the the, the viewer what he or she has to 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 find and to understand and to and to think and we prefer this um uh, that just to uh, evoke um the ideas and emotions and um the complexity of the issues at stake 
when it comes to uh, deciding the place where you 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 want to be buried, and uh, it's the same when Rashid speaks and um, the Algerian man who uh, is married with a French woman. At, at no moment we uh, just tell you what you have to think about the the photographs we uh, we put on his voice. Um, so that's. Um, that that's very very important um and all but also the, the um, all the choices all these choices have been made very in a very smooth uh, uh, collaboration and discussion with valerie and um it, what, what uh, just to conclude this uh, my intervention i could say that uh, very often when we have uh, screened this movie in um, in seminars or uh, or uh, other places uh, when the time for questions come i'm always the one who is uh, asked the questions about technique and and about uh, how we built the the movie and Valerie is always the the one who is questioned about the scientific data and uh, but Valerie is kind enough to uh, in this case, also uh, um, ask to me the questions about what I felt about uh, the, the subject itself. And we could also, uh, we didn't do this choice because um, uh, for several reasons, but uh, Valerie could have spoken about the construction of the film, and I could have also spoken to you about um, the, uh, the data and about her, her PhD. Uh, not the PhD itself, but how she uh, transposed the PhD and uh, um, research into this film. It's really uh, an equal collaboration, and and this e uh, equality, um, the, this belief of equal relevancy is uh, really at the core of our collaboration. So thank you. Thank you, Frederic. Mm -hmm. Valérie, you want to, to, to continue? Oui, je vais continuer donc euh, par petits bouts et je te laisse euh, traduire au fur et à mesure. Bon, on va voir ce que ça donne. Euh, donc, euh, vous avez pu euh, remarquer en fait que dans, dans les extraits que le dispositif euh, filmique est articulé autour de l'entretien biographique. Et donc, à partir de l'expérience de ce film, Je propose personnellement de revenir un petit peu plus sur ce que peut produire le récit de soi dans un dispositif qui est médié par la caméra lorsqu'il charrie des enjeux identitaires et politiques importants. Donc, en deux temps, peut-être dans une première étape, je proposerai quelques éclairages sur l'étude et son objet. Et ensuite, je reviendrai sur l'intérêt de notre expérimentation et la façon dont nous allons travailler. Right. Um, so you're going to present the uh, the objective of this uh, of your research a study um, and uh, and a study which in which the this uh, biographic interviews it at the core uh, really it's at the core of your data production and then uh, you you're going to to present the um, this collaboration and and uh, how you how you thought this this collaboration together. Donc la, la recherche doctorale, elle a été réalisée à chalon sur saône entre 2015 et 2021. Et euh, c'est une enquête donc, qui combine des recherches documentaires, des observations, 83 entretiens, dont 50 biographiques, et la réalisation de ce film donc, qui est dans une démarche participative. Et donc, ce qu'il faut retenir en premier lieu, c'est que c'est une ville de 45 000 habitants, et que malgré l'enracinement indéniable des familles et l'existence ancienne d'un carré euh, musulman dans l'un des cimetières, le rapatriement post-mortem demeure la règle, même pour les défunts jeunes euh, nés en France, et euh, qu'il est de plus en plus organisé par des assurances rapatriement, euh, facilité euh, bien sûr par euh, des, les pays d'origine via des réseaux euh, d'acteurs euh, consulaires, et euh, le recours croissant, euh, en tout cas à chalon sur saône à des pompes funèbres confessionnelles partenaires. Um, so yeah, so you've you've been working on the since 2015 on Chalon-sur-Saône in, in France, 
so as you, as you mentioned, these uh, biographic interviews are really at the core of your of your methodology. So you you've undertaken altogether eighty three interviews, uh, including fifty uh, biographic interviews. Plus, you uh, of course you also have used the observation and uh, the on site observation. But it's a small city of forty five and forty five thousand inhabitants. Uh, in which the, this um, immigrant community is really well embedded, rooted, and there is a long-standing uh, Muslim area in the cemetery. But uh, nevertheless, the repatriation remains a rule, and uh, the, this repat body repatriation is taken in charge by a series of actors, uh, including the um, insurance companies, consular actors, and uh, pont funèbre, I don't know how to translate it, um, the uh, funerary uh, businesses. Funeral home. Funeral home. Yeah. All right. Okay. So yeah. Tu peux tu peux. Valérie. Donc euh, en fait, il, il ressort euh, également que les choix funéraires. Alors les choix, c'est à la fois le projet posthume ou le choix euh, qui a été fait pour un, un proche. Euh, que ces choix s'arbitrent euh, entre différents euh, référents normatifs et aussi le fait de posséder une assurance rapatriement ou pas. Donc euh, différents référent normatif, c'est-à-dire ben, à la fois l'intégration par la mort comme référentiel dominant du, du groupe majoritaire, l'institutionnalisation quand même de la norme des retours post-mortem depuis le début de l'immigration, les prescriptions religieuses pour certains, les interactions familiales transnationales et bien sûr les questionnements intimes qui sont liés au parcours de chacun à son stade biographique, euh, à son statut familial, etc. Right, so you, you've been working on these uh, burial choices, which has been done either by these, the people themselves or by, um, by relatives after the death of the, of the person. Uh, and so this choice depends on a range of, uh, of uh, factors, including the, the presence of, or the, um, if there is an insurance or not. Uh, the, um, the prescription of the, the, what the society says about the, what we can, we call, you call integration through death. Uh, but also the institutionalization of the of the re, of the repatriation. We mentioned these funeral homes and these uh, insurance companies and so on. Uh, you have also religious considerations, which are extremely important. The the presence or not of a transnational family linkages, but also uh, the um, the feelings, the personal subjectivities of uh, of the people themselves, uh, which relates to their. Uh, personal trajectory and immigrant integration trajectory. Donc on peut également remarquer que la, la variété des aspirations en fait des projets euh, révèle euh, une appropriation euh, contrastée des rites et des, euh, et des prescriptions, et ce qui nous invite à repenser le, la dialectique terre d'origine et société d'accueil qui est mise en avant dans certains travaux sur la question. Et euh, moi, je, je place davantage ces aspirations dans une perspective de filiation descendante, comme on a pu entendre avec euh, Abderrahim et puis euh, Rachid dans l'extrait. Et euh, ça, ça va au-delà en fait du choix d'un retour, euh, au-delà du choix de l'origine euh, d'un côté ou euh, de l'intégration par la mort. Right, so <laughs> your, your work shows a variety of uh, yearnings, of, uh, of um, uh, aspirations, and uh, how this, uh, the rituals and the practices are extremely contrasted and, uh, and, uh, and varied. And you, you, sh you show that you, we need to move beyond this uh, sim simple uh, this dichotomy between the host land and the homeland. Uh, it's too simple for you, and you prefer to, to embed uh, the choices into uh, a, a personal trajectory and the, uh, so the, the, the presence of children and the, uh, the filiation of uh, the people. Um, donc, en fait, on peut dé décliner uh, trois grands modèles de funérailles hein, parmi ces choix. Donc, uh, le rapatriement de la dépouille pour, uh, pour maintenir des continuités entre les descendants et le pays uh, origine de la famille. Euh, c'est en tout cas sur le territoire d'enquête 
euh, l'option la plus largement euh, suivie. Ensuite, euh, l'enterrement au carré euh, confessionnel de la commune. Donc, il s'agit euh, souvent d'un ancrage négocié dans les collectifs familiaux. Et euh, c'est un choix qui demeure encore minoritaire. Cela dit, euh, de, les générations de descendants qui sont euh, souvent engagées dans des mariages mixtes avec des Français ou bien des Français d'origine étrangère différente ou encore les familles recomposées, euh, bah le, le carré confessionnel devient un lieu de compromis. C'est ce qu'on entend un petit peu avec le témoignage de Rachid. Et enfin, euh, l'inhumation en dehors du carré, voire euh, la crémation pour certains, elle est davantage motivée par une volonté de, de s'émanciper, euh, une volonté affichée de s'émanciper de la pression normative euh, communautaire ou familiale. Pour l'instant, ça concerne peu de personnes et avec des profils quand même très particuliers. Right, so you've got uh, three types of uh, choices, so three, three, three categories of choices. The first one, which is a majority one, which is a, the repatriation of the body uh, with the, the aim of the, the, the view of uh, maintaining this continuity between the, the people and their family uh, in, the, in the whole origin country. Uh, the second one is a burial in the Muslim square the, uh, of the cemetery, which still regard a minor minority of people, but it's a, it's a growing share because of the, the uh, transformation of uh, the family units, the, the, the growing number of mixed marriages uh, and or re, re, recomposed uh, re, re, um, marriages. And for, for them, uh, this, this, this choice is a compromise, right? it's presented as a compromise. And then the third choice is the, the burial as outside of the Muslim square, which is um, a statement. It's a statement of uh, emancipation uh, out of the, of the group, of the, uh, out of the normative pressure of, of the group. And so it, it regards a very small minority, but a very uh, specific profile of people. Okay. Donc, en, en fait, on va retenir en final que les choix funéraires suscitent souvent des désaccords dans les espaces familiaux et les réseaux d'interconnaissance, que ce n'est pas un choix qui s'affiche ouvertement et euh, s'il est euh, trop éloigné de la norme du rapatriement. Et donc, pour la réalisation du film, cela, engendre un, cela a engendré un triple enjeu pour nous. Euh, tout d'abord, inscrire les récits de soi dans leur contexte socio-historique et normatif, Deuxième enjeu, faire advenir euh, et accueillir une parole sensible dans tous les sens du terme et la rendre intelligible. Et enfin, troisième enjeu, saisir la dimension politique à travers le récit intime. It's, um, the burial choices can be extremely contentious and can raise uh, uh, difficulties and issues uh, within the, the community. So it, it poses a different uh, a series of stakes for the film and the production of the, of the data. Uh, so the, 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 the film uh, must, uh, um, uh, of course, elicit a very sensitive uh, uh, voice from the, the an intimate voice, but at the sa same time, it must, uh, there is a strong political dimension, uh, which, uh, which must be taken into account. Donc là, je vais revenir du coup sur l'expérimentation, sur ce travail à travers ces trois enjeux. Euh, donc, premier enjeu, inscrire les récits dans leur contexte. Euh, L'inscription sociale des parcours des, des cinq euh, protagonistes a été reconstituée par le montage donc des éléments visuels et l'habillage sonore, comme l'a un peu expliqué euh, Frédéric, avec en toile de fond la ville de chalon sur saône Et donc notre écriture visuelle s'est déployée en, privilégi en privilégiant donc une, une double focale contextuelle qui est celle de la recherche, c'est-à-dire une focale spatiale, les territoires vécus et euh, les territoires euh, absents, et euh, une focale sociale des territoires qui ont une histoire. Bon, Frédéric a un petit peu développé la façon dont nous avons travaillé et articulé tout ça. The, you, the stake of your of the, the, the film was to embed the, this narrative into their context. It's a special context, as the, the city of chalon sur saône but also the, 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 this, which is a lived territory. But you also need to to, to highlight the, this absence territory uh, and uh, of the uh, of the homeland. 
but uh, there is also a social context with uh, which is embedded in, in the local territory um, and uh, yeah and this social context <laughs> sorry it's, and this is history <laughs> Ok, donc l'enjeu 2, c'était de, de faire advenir et accueillir une parole sensible, et là, c'est quelque chose d'assez intéressant aussi. Euh, la, la relation donc, avec les, les protagonistes, comme l'a rappelé euh, Frédéric, était antérieure au film, et elle s'ancrait dans la, dans la durée d'une enquête ethnographique, donc, durant laquelle les situations d'entretien étaient plus ou moins déritualisées, ce qui m'a permis à moi de voir la, la différence, le différentiel de parole donné dans la confidentialité et ensuite devant la caméra. Euh, et donc, <rire> ce dispositif filmique agit indiscutablement sur le, produit, euh, sur le discours produit à l'écran parce que les, les préoccupations des personnes filmées à l'égard des destinataires supposés du film ont induit une maîtrise de leurs propos. On sent dans les extraits certaines résistances et puis des silences et donc, je dirais que sur ce point, le tournage a déplacé une parole intime vers une parole publique, saisie au cœur d'enjeux relationnels en l'absence d'anonymat et dans un réseau d'interconnaissances. Right. Um, yeah, so you, the, the relations with the interviewee uh, started before the film, uh, long, long, long before. So you can measure the difference between what they say uh, in front of the camera and, and uh, what they say in the, in the everyday life in your, uh, during your everyday contact. And you, you can measure the, the extent to which the, the, the interviewees um, take into account the, the people who will, will see, who will watch the, the, the movie. And it's a close-knit community, so uh, they are concerned. And so their, their, their intimate voice is transformed into a public voice uh, via the, the camera. Et donc, les, les cinq personnes qui ont témoigné avaient euh, tout à fait conscience de, de collaborer donc, à, la, à la construction d'un savoir. Et donc, elles nous ont imposé leurs limites. Euh, certainement qu'elles attendaient euh, quelque chose aussi de l'entreprise participative qui n'était euh, pas tout à fait la même que la nôtre. Et donc, le, le souci qu'elles portaient à la manière dont le film allait être reçu, voire utilisé, euh, a, a construit leur image. Donc, le propos du film, euh, ça veut dire qu'elles euh, ne se sont pas offertes sans vouloir contrôler euh, ce qu'allait devenir leur discours et euh, le tournage est devenu aussi d'une certaine manière euh, une mise en scène d'elle-même et pour nous c'est devenu un compromis éthique aussi. Mm. Right. Uh, so the, the interviewees were conscious, uh, really aware of uh, participating in a, in a production of knowledge, uh, but uh, they wanted to impose the, 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 the limits uh, to this uh, knowledge. And so there is a kind of bargain uh, and uh, and the uh, I don't know how to translate the end of your your idea. Can you say it again? Is the uh, Ouais, donc elles, se sont, elles ne se sont pas offertes sans vouloir contrôler en fait ce qu'elle ce qu allait devenir yeah. euh, elle disait. Yeah. Donc, She, they wanted to elle. yeah they wanted to stay in control of uh, of the process of the uh, yes. of this uh, tournage. Yeah. Et euh, donc ce qui fait qu'on ne on ne peut pas se réduire à l'analyse discursive quand on regarde le film, mais qu'il faut être attentif au rythme, aux hésitations aux résistances et au silence qu'on a essayé de, de mettre en avant, euh, notamment euh, voilà, avec l'exemple de, de Mehdi qui a beaucoup de difficultés à clarifier ce « nous » qui est à la fois une identité plurielle et incomplète, euh, qui est réactivé lors des, des décès. Yeah, uh, so you say that the analysis, the pure analysis, uh, uh, discursive analysis is not enough. You also need to take into account the hesitation, uh, the, um, the, the difficulty of expression, uh, which in, in themselves say something about their difficulty of expressing their own identity and their relationship with the community. Uh, L'entretien biographique filmé peut également uh, devenir un lieu pour, uh, pour uh, mesurer l'expérience le, douloureuse aussi hein, du, du récit de soi. 
on le, on le pressent un peu dans l'extrait le, dans avec Touria. Pour nous, ça veut dire que filmer, c'est reconnaître l'autre dans, dans son expérience du tournage et le traiter avec délicatesse dans ces moments-là. Mmh. Et euh, dans notre cas, en tout cas, montrer les moments où l'émotion déborde a consisté plutôt à la cacher ou à donner à entendre une image silencieuse. Mm. Yeah. So you, you regard filming as a, a way of acknowledging the other and respecting him, but at the same time, uh, you must uh, take into account what is hidden uh, and uh, what is not told in the, in the film. Uh, donc, l'entretien filmé reste une, une expérience cadrée, mais tout ce qui se produit hors du cadre constitue un matériau très riche et pertinent mmh. pour l'analyse. Et euh, l'utilisation de, de l'esquisse visuelle euh, suppose du coup un contenu absent qui est restitué par le spectateur et son interprétation. Mmh. Et donc ça devient l'endroit d'une autre co-construction du sens. Right, so what is out of the, the frame is extremely important it's also uh, it's an absent content which has to be interpreted by the by those who watch the film and so there is another uh, place where the, the, the meaning is, is built between the relation within the relation between the who the those who watch and the film itself okay Et donc l'enjeu en, 3 c'est saisir la, la dimension politique, donc on l'a surtout saisi lors des projections en fait, euh, enfin on l'a beaucoup saisi euh, lors des projections, euh, les, les témoins du film sont devenus aux yeux du public les experts, et donc ils ont pu créer leur propre espace de parole, et euh, en l'absence des témoins, en dehors du terrain d'enquête, de, les, les, les spectateurs euh, ben, pouvaient euh, se faire, euh, euh, à partir de leur récit, pouvaient... Euh, se faire la, leur propre ethnologie du, du sujet. Euh, toutefois, ça suppose d'accueillir le, le, le discours de ces personnes sans jugement. Et euh, on s'est aperçu quand même que la perception de certains spectateurs euh, s'est euh, exprimée avec beaucoup de conviction et peu de précaution lors de, de, de débats. Euh, certains considérant, par exemple, que l'intégration par la mort, selon les normes sociales laïques, était l'unique référentiel de la citoyenneté des immigrés et de leurs descendants. Et donc, la, la réception euh, par les autres a mis en lumière un autre cadre d'injonction dans lequel le narrateur est défini euh, à travers ses choix funéraires. Mm. Right. So, the third stake of the, the film is the political one. <coughs> And it's a, it's a movie where the, the documentary where the, the, um, the witnesses you interview uh, uh, become experts, but their, their voice is not um, received by the audience in a, in a simple way. And they also express the, the audience during the debates, you found that they express their own opinion, their own view, and they, they, their critique of the, uh, the testimonies of the people. And some of them regard the uh, integration through death, so the fact of being buried in France as the ultimate sign of integration. And so for them, the, the choice of being repatriated was seen as a, as a problem for integration. En conclusion, donc je, je retiendrai deux choses. Euh, chaque narrateur donc, propose un, un récit d'événements ou de désordre et euh, incarne l'épaisseur en fait, de, de ces histoires. Mais euh, on ne peut pas prétendre que, que cette expérience est devenue un, un endroit où se fabrique un « nous » inclusif, en fait. Et que euh, quand on réfléchit un petit peu sur tout ce processus de mise en récit, ben, on, on, se, on mesure que l'anthropologie partagée ne, ne va pas de soi. Right, so, uh, these testimonies, well, and this documentary shows the limit of the possibility of creating of an inclusive we through these uh, the, the testimonies. Um, and the, yeah, they, they also elicit a, a critical voice and, uh, and um, yeah, and this is political dimension that you mentioned and the, uh, 
um, it's really what I forgot to mention. It is that um, you, you really show that uh, these uh, critiques by the audience uh, reveal this normative framework, which is imposed by the whole society as itself. So the debates are also a way of producing uh, knowledge and uh, shed a light on their the condition of uh, burial. Et donc, pour, 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 pour finir vraiment, donc ce, ce récit de soi qui était initialement intime et confiant s'agrège à, à un commun et se heurte du coup aux représentations des autres. Et donc, ce, ce film a rendu justement audible des questions sensibles et, euh, et, et l'entretien euh, euh, narratif finalement demeure une entreprise fragile euh, parce que d'une certaine manière... Euh, euh, il questionne l'accueil de l'autre euh, à travers son propre récit, surtout euh, lorsque ce récit n'est pas celui qui est attendu. Et euh, c'est sûrement d'autant plus vrai parce qu'il s'agit de récits de migration, donc indissociables de la question euh, des appartenances et, et des frontières, mmh. euh, dans un contexte de débat qui est polarisé sur l'identité et l'immigration. Right. So you, you say that uh, in conclusion that the, this, uh, this uh, narratives of the self, which uh, initially are seen as uh, intimate, uh, very intimate uh, testimonies, uh, are face and uh, confront the, the social representation of, of the others. Uh, and it questions the, the welcoming of the other. Um, and um, yeah, it raises, uh, it raises the, the, the fault lines Uh, that uh, uh, traverse the, the, the society and the immigrant populations. And, and so it, it's really these intimate voices uh, well, uh, um, raise this uh, collective experience of immigration and its perception in the whole society. Thank you. Merci. <laughs> right. Okay, so thanks a lot, uh, Valérie and, and Frédéric. Uh, uh, so now uh, we are going to, to move the questions to, to questions. It's uh, already a bit late, but uh, I think we can take uh, more time uh, to, to, because I'm sure there is already Yumna raising your hand, but uh, yeah, Yumna, you want to ask a question? You parle français ou en anglais ou les deux? <laughs> Maybe in English, if you don't mind. And, yes, uh, sure. D'abord, Valérie, merci beaucoup et Frédéric d'avoir partagé ça avec nous. Et thank you, Valérie and Frédéric, to share this with us. Valérie and I work on similar subjects, but in two different cities. And I focus on Algerians, specifically Valérie on Maghrebi. And I have a question for Frédéric and Valérie. Who decided about the photos? Was it the idea of Valérie and the Frederick to ask the interviewees to use the photos as a medium to talk about? And the second the question is, how did the Frederick as a photographer and Valérie as a researcher, how did you deal with the emotions, when the interviewee breaks into tears or when the interviewee get into a silent moment, how did you react to this? And thank you so much. Valérie, tu veux que je tra traduise? Non, j'ai co compris. Ouais. Euh, donc, alors, l'idée des, des photos, euh, alors, il faut savoir qu'avant de réaliser ce, ce documentaire, euh, J'avais réalisé un autre documentaire dans le cadre d'une précédente recherche sur euh, des, des, des immigrants âgés. Euh, donc c'est un documentaire qui s'appelle Shibani, mémoire d'exil. Et euh, dans, dans, mon, dans, dans mon approche euh, bio, biographique, je travaille beaucoup à partir de photographies. Donc euh, l'usage de, de la photographie m'est familier. Ce qui explique certainement aussi hein, cette euh, facilité qu'on a eue à travailler avec... Frédéric. Donc, euh, voilà. Et, et du coup, c'est aussi la raison pour laquelle j'ai choisi de faire ce film plutôt avec un photographe qu'avec un cinéaste. 
Yeah, and uh, how do you deal with the emotions and the silences and the... Uh, Oh, euh, comment tu as pardon comment tu as pu euh, co comment as-tu géré les, les moments d'émotion de, de peut-être parfois de larmes de, de silence au euh, moment des interviews je peux répondre si tu veux Valérie oui vas-y <coughs> yeah, um, uh, during the, 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 the filming of the, the interviews um, we were three people in front of the, the interview V um i was sitting in a corner of the room without uh speaking without taking pictures without questioning anything and um valerie, valerie was uh, the, the camera was in front of the interviewee with the cameraman sitting next to the camera and then valerie was sitting next to to uh to the cameraman so um it happened uh, at least twice with uh Intisa, uh, a young Tunisian woman whom we saw in the teaser and with Turia, that indeed um, they broke into tears during the, the answers to, to Valérie's question. And we just let that happen without, um, uh, without trying to, to stop it. And uh, if it lasted for too long and if they felt more comfortable about it we just suggested them to that we could just turn off the camera for a while and and uh, uh, and start later um because it was it, it was um it, it must have been for them quite a an impressive um uh, setting because uh, there is this black curtain at, uh, behind them there is this black curtain on this table and then you you you, you gotta speak about your a very intimate questions facing three people who, who look at you so uh and and speaking about uh, uh these intimate questions must really have been not easy so we let that happen with a lot of respect and and uh, and uh, and all the time they need it and um the two of them um once the emotion was over or a bit uh lessened um quite easily started again to uh to speak at, at, the, at that time any other question you can raise your hand in the in the chat if you want or um yeah francesca Thank you, Thomas. There was a, a Linda, I mean, uh, Nada, maybe before me. Sorry, Nada. Nada? Yes, thank you. Oh, Nada. Yeah, can you hear me? It's, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Valérie uh, uh, and Frédéric, for this very interesting talk. Merci beaucoup, Valérie. We, we've met, uh, I think, two years ago, and uh, I, I, I was happy to, to watch your uh, part of extracts of uh, of your documentary uh, you mentioned and it's really interesting I, I also work on the same thing but from a political dimension and another territory which is Le Havre je travaille plus ou moins sur sur une approche localisée mais au niveau du Havre mais j'interroge la dimension politique more than this individual uh, personal intimate uh, approach and I was wondering if uh, you mentioned the political dimension as a third dimension, and I was wondering if you had, you, you how would you explore this political dimension? Uh, are you planning to have interviews with officials talking about uh, their vision uh, of, uh, of what it means, for example, to choose to be buried in, uh, in France or to be repatriated? Uh, so my question is, how would you explore this third political dimension and uh, will you cross it with the other uh, individual intimate uh, version? You said that during the reception, it had an impact, uh, that, that the reception uh, of the testimonies uh, of the interviewee uh, echoed the political dimension. Can you, I'm not sure that my question is, is, is clear, but 
can you can you tell me tell us more about this? Est-ce que tu as pu approfondir cette dimension politique par des interviews auprès de de responsables de voilà etc. Est-ce que tu as d'autres méthodes pour approfondir? Euh, Valérie euh, et pardon Thomas, merci d'ailleurs beaucoup pour euh, la super traduction. Euh, je, voulais savoir, euh, je voulais savoir en fait cette dimension politique que tu as que tu as soulignée. Est-ce que euh, com est -ce, comment tu vois qu'elle est prise en compte par euh, les gens que tu as interviewés Tu comment ça se manifeste dans leurs témoignages cette dimension politique Alors. Euh, oui, je l'interroge, cette dimension politique. Donc, en dehors des entretiens biographiques, il y a 43 entretiens d'autres acteurs hein, qui sont à la fois des acteurs du culte, euh, des, des, des acteurs euh, institutionnels, des, mm -hmm. euh, des, des élus et euh, des professionnels du funéraire, essentiellement. Donc, euh, elle est aussi donc, abordée par des, des entretiens plus, plus classiques en sociologie, oui. en fait. Euh, et à l'intérieur des, des récits intimes ou des récits biographiques, et, et l'expérience du film justement nous a permis de saisir euh, la difficulté à prendre euh, la parole publiquement sur ces questions. C'est-à-dire que moi j'ai vraiment pu mesurer euh, ce qui se dit dans la confidentialité et ce qui se dit publiquement. Euh, le, le fait de, de pouvoir faire une ethnographie, ça, ça permet aussi ce genre d'entretiens de, qui sont complètement ritualisés. Euh, informel, non enregistré, enfin il y, y a des choses enregistrées, des choses qui ne sont pas. Donc ça aussi, ça permet de, de, de mesurer euh, le, le poids en tout cas des injonctions, quelles qu'elles soient d'ailleurs. Hein. Oui. Euh, donc euh, c'est un peu comme ça que je travaille cette question, euh, cette question politique. Mais c'est vrai que le, le matériau central, c'est le matériau biographique pour, euh, pour ma recherche. Mm. Merci. Thank you. Happy to translate. So yeah, so so the response is yes. She she undertook uh, interviews with uh, with uh, other people to 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 elaborate a little bit on this political dimension, and uh, and also she used uh, what she, it's funny you 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 say you talk about uh, deritualized interviews uh, instead of informal interviews. So these interviews which are uh, without recording, without the questionnaire, without the uh, informal interactions, so, yeah, which also uh, is a, a good tool for having a, a different point of view. Francesca? Uh, yes, thank you very much for, for the film and for the presentation. Um, I send the question in French uh, uh, to Valérie directly, and so I wanted to know. That I don't know is, 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 is if it's really a question. I mean, uh, you said, Frédéric, that the, there is not um, that the film is not or the photos are, is not uh, uh, the reality, the truth. I, I mean, is there a single reality or, or truth? Uh, it is always uh, photos are always uh, the the gaze the look the view of the photographer and this is uh, also in this way for a researcher when uh, she or he decides uh, the point of view the focus and what he wants to to put in the core of of the obvious work of uh, so um uh, and then you have the, the experience and the, 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 the view of the person who is looking at your work, who is listening at your work. And so this is a match, a, a, a meet, a meeting between two realities, two truths. So this is not a, a limit in my, um, for me, it's a point, uh, a, stand, a starting point for a, a, a more, um, uh, for um, uh, reflexive uh, attitudes, uh, and uh, uh, th this is really um, the core of our work. I mean, this is the meeting between people, my way of seeing things, your way of receive, uh, you receive or uh, see my reality, and your reality will meet in, in this work. And this is great. I mean, is this not a limit? That saying there is not a reality, that is, there is not a truth, is, it's a kind of, of um, it, it, it reduces your work. I mean, it's, I don't know what. 
Actually, so really a question for Frederic. Huh? This one. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree <laughs> with what you said. Well, um, the, the problem when it comes to photography is that that's uh, the, the, the question of truth and the question of reality uh, has been what we've been taught uh, uh, for uh, ages, that photography is an analog, uh, an analogy of the world. And <clears throat> this is all the question of uh, what they call in, in um, uh, history of art uh, uh, indexicality about uh, and uh, about photography and um, I, I still have uh, colleagues who believe that they uh, document the reality of the world and uh, so this is something we still have that, that there's a long way to go just to uh, to among photographers just to make them understand what you've just beautifully uh, explained uh, well, as soon as I put a frame around the reality, I make choices. That I make choice to exclude what is not in the frame. And photography becomes interesting when uh, there is a dialogue between what's in the frame and what's, it, what's not in the frame. But photography becomes also very interesting when you let it, uh, when you put it in dialogue with other languages. And that's really uh, what we believe, Valerie and me, and probably most of you, when you um, the, 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 this dialogue between photography and research and social, social science produces uh, a meaning that is more interesting and more uh, and richer than just the basic sum of the meanings of the original languages. Um, but um, in the photographic world today, of course, thing changes, uh, especially uh, um, after the the. I mean, during the golden age of the uh, photojournalism and documentary photography with agencies like uh, Magnum or the, the one I belong, uh, I'm a member of like VUE agency, there's been a, a promotion of uh, personal view and the personal uh, approach to, to reality. But th this is still a very slow process, especially in photojournalism. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if I uh, answered the question, um, but just it was a bit provocative to 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 say that uh, the uh, <laughs> photography doesn't uh, uh, doesn't represent re reality. It's just your vision of reality, of course, and that's what's beautiful. I also completely agree with that. That's uh, how you create meaning, definitely. Thank you for your question. Thank you, Marcus. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot, um, Valerie and Frederic. And this is maybe a question that's um, related a bit to the one just um, asked by, by Francesca. Um, I think it's very interesting and it somehow also relates to what we heard two weeks ago, this, this whole play of different regimes of, of images, the visual, the discursive, um, um, social sciences, photography, etc. And so you clearly mentioned the two languages and that the you do not want to have hierarchies between them. Um, you want to be respectful of the other's language and um, equal relevance. So, and also the question of illustration. So I actually would like to know, do you think that can these two languages actually ultimately be equal in the sense of, for example, for the production of knowledge or for the production of emotions? So that will be my first question. And the second, in the specific um, product, a very hybrid product, obviously, you have produced, can one entirely escape illustration? So, um, uh, Frédéric, you mentioned um, Bresson's photography, for example. But in your case, you also have filmed, filmed interviews, meaning we have a perfect analogy between, in certain bits at least, we've seen between the spoken word we hear and also the, the film, uh, the image. So in these, in these situations, can we actually avoid entirely illustration? Valérie, tu veux que je traduise un petit peu? En fait, il y a... Euh, Marcus euh, se posait la question de ces deux langages, tu, tu compléteras Marcus, 
sur euh, que, enfin, cette expression qu'utilise Frédéric, hein, ces deux langages. D'ailleurs, entre parenthèses, euh, je n'ai pas bien compris de quel langage s'agit-il. S'agit-il des langages d'un côté du, du, du photographe et de l'autre côté de la, de la chercheuse en sciences sociales, ou est-ce que c'est le langage de, de, des interviewés, des personnes interviewées, à, par rapport à, à votre langage à vous euh, et puis alors voilà et se poser la question de la relation entre ces langages, de leur hiérarchie, de leur de leur combinaison pour produire euh, ce que ce que vous entendez. Et la, la deuxième question porte plus sur euh, peut-on échapper à l'illustration finalement Est-ce que, est -ce que est cette image euh, peut-elle complètement échapper à son statut d'illustration Merci Thomas. Juste pour effectivement donc j'ai compris ces deux des, ces deux langages comme euh, comme c'était dit la photographie d'une part et les sciences sociales de l'autre. Oui. Oui, et, la ouais, voilà. et, et donc la question aussi pour l'illustration c'est spécifiquement dans les parties euh, où il y a vraiment des interviews filmées parce qu'il y a à la fois la voix et le discours euh, et une analogie parfaite ou en tout cas une relation parfaite avec l'image. Tu veux répondre à une partie, Valérie ou tu veux que je, je... Vas-y. Euh, euh, about the question of equality, um, uh, this is still a, a very sensitive question, um, in my opinion. Uh, I'm, um, photographers don't like to share their language with other people in general, because they believe that they have, the, they believe, a lot of them believe that photography is above uh, uh, other languages, but uh, sooner or later when age come, <laughs> some of them change their mind. Uh, I have a colleague at VUE Agency whom I respect very much. His name is Jean-Robert Dantou, and he um, worked with uh, uh, Florence Weber, Um, to confront, um, to, to address this question of uh, how these two languages, photography and uh, sociology, can um, work together to produce an, a, new, uh, a new dimension of, of uh, meaning. And um, so the, 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 the work they did is, um, uh, has been published in a book called The Walls Don't Speak, Les Murs Ne Parlent Pas. Uh, which I, I can just send the, the reference afterwards. And um, Jean-Robert is currently, we, we, I saw him very recently, he's currently working uh, on a PhD where he raises, uh, in which he raises uh, this um, particular question. How, um, his question is, uh, how can we uh, um, make sure, what does a photography need to become uh, scientific data. Uh, and uh, the, so far, as, as far as I know from well, his research uh, has uh, uh, led him to think is you, you need to weaponize it against misunderstanding by um, bringing in a lot of text to, uh, um, to strengthen it. And uh, but this is um, this is one direction. I don't see other direction uh, for the moment. Uh, but uh, just to make sure that it is really a, a scientific data, I think you have to explain what's in the picture. Um, and, uh, and this is also something that um, uh, Walter Benjamin says uh, in in in, uh, in thirty nine in the, um, the in his book about the um, uh, reproduction of the the of art is as soon as uh, uh, photography becomes a witness of history, uh, the caption becomes absolutely needed. Otherwise, uh, photography is meaningless. So um, uh, I think equality can happen in, uh, in some circumstances. And it has to be built by, uh, by in, in, in a collaborative way. Um, I don't know if it's uh, okay as, as an answer. You'll tell me if you want me to, to uh, elaborate more on that. Um, and, and regarding your second question, um, uh, illustration 
no, you, 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 you cannot avoid illustration uh, at any, uh, 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 all the time. And, and, but th this is an horizon. This is something you, you, um, you, you want, you, you, you try to achieve because uh, there are some, there are times when you need the, pho the photograph to say exactly what it says. Uh, because you don't want to be, uh, you don't want it to be misunderstood. But there are times also where uh, you don't want to tell the viewer what he has to think or she has to think, and you want to, you want photography to be a tool to open doors in your mind and let your uh, imagination uh, uh, wander uh, with what you, with the visual and and uh, lexical proposal, um, and. Yeah, just, I, I I can't but agree to what you said about the the, the part of the the film when the, uh, when the the interviewee speak in front of, um, uh, with, with this black curtain behind them. There there is indeed uh, most of the time because sometimes this they keep speaking with new pictures on uh, on their voice, uh, but when we have the person speaking and uh, and their image, there is a perfect analogy. Um, but uh, I don't know if it's illustration uh, in terms of uh, um, I think there is a lot of uh, uh, untold in what they say. And maybe the fact that we can see them uh, speaking um, Rather than thinking, oh yes, the the the, the lipping is correct, <laughs> you know, the, the 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 lips speak the words. I think uh, um, be because or thanks to what we have just put before and after uh, in the in the editing of the movie, uh, you, you I hope that your mind starts um, thinking about what can their emotion be and what can. Uh, their doubts be about uh, all, 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 all these issues. Um, so not, I'm not sure illustration is a question at that uh, at that time. It, it, it's uh, it ha I hope that it happens somewhere else. I hope. Okay, you, uh, tell me if uh, that was okay. If if you if I answered the question. No, no, thanks. Thanks very much. Um, but I mean, Valerie, maybe you have. Uh something to add as well. Oui, très brièvement, je, sur, surtout sur la première question, en fait, ce, ces deux langages, c'est celui, c'est plus le, le, la réciprocité qui existe entre, à notre sens, hein, entre le texte, le discours et l'image, pour, euh, dans, dans notre écriture visuelle, à nous, en tout cas. Et euh, les, 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 différents les différents régimes d'images qui ont été utilisés, c'est-à-dire des photographies d'archives, des photographies faites par euh, Frédéric ou bien des photographies euh, personnelles qui ont, euh, qui ont été choisies par les personnes hein, au départ. Hein. C'est une présélection qui a été faite par, euh, par les personnes. Donc déjà, ça dit aussi quelque chose de la narration qu'elles ont envie de faire d'elles-mêmes. Donc ce qui, ce, qui, euh, ce qui nous paraît euh, équivalent, en tout cas dans ces deux, dans ces deux langages, c'est le discours qui est produit autour. De, et du discours et de l'image. Je ne sais pas si je me suis bien fait comprendre. Il y a un méta-discours autour du académique discours et du discours written et du photographique discours. Et vous avez mentionné aussi que les photographies ont été choisies par les interviewees eux-mêmes, ce qui est in itself already a process preparing uh, what they want to say about themselves. Yeah. Right. Okay, if there is um, no more question, I think we can uh, uh, call it a webinar. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think it was very important for uh, to, to take the time to discuss with you and to take some, uh, yeah, you, 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 there are so many facets uh, in, your, in your work. Uh, I'm very glad we, we take, a, we, we take a, a bit of time. Um, yeah, so um, Bidisha, do you want to, to, to introduce the, uh, the next webinar? Uh, <clears throat> yes, so we have a, um, a 
our final webinar of the series on March 4th, uh, same time, Friday, uh, 10 a.m. Central uh, European Time, CT. Uh, the speaker will be Dr. Mita Banerjee um, from Germany. Um, <clears throat> uh, and she will be talking about um, uh, an autobiographical work um, of uh, a woman um, <clears throat> who uh, drowned, um, uh, well, uh, saved a number of people uh, on a migrant boat that she was on and then later became a participant um, of uh, an Olympic uh, swimming team, uh, a refugee Olympic swimming team. Uh, <clears throat> so um, uh, she's going to talk about sort of, um, you know, this idea of the liminality between between uh, life and death uh, in, in uh my uh, refugee migrations. Um, <clears throat> so um, should be very interesting. Um, so please join us if you can. We will be sending out the information very soon. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, uh, the webinar has been recorded, so we will uh, put it on the uh, on the YouTube uh, channel of the uh, of the program. Yes. So thank you very much, uh, Frederic and Valérie. It's it was wonderful. Wonderful. It was very uh, insightful and, uh, and very rich. Yeah. yeah. Merci um, à vous pour l'invitation. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Right. Okay. So yeah. Je dis, do you want to add something or? Not particularly. So thank you so okay. much. And you know, once again, um, it's so striking to see the, the connection between the dead and the living and the way, uh, in fact, the, the processing of death actually enables something that otherwise would not have been enabled among the living. Uh, and this was particularly uh, interesting and, and uh, noted when one of the interviewees actually said, you know, after the repatriation of my um, grandfather, some of my uncles who hadn't gone to gone back uh, were actually able to go back. So, and this is, I think it says, you know, a lot about what we are interested in, in fact, in this uh, thematic ethics uh, series. So thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Okay, but thank you and uh, goodbye everyone and uh, very pleased to, to see you at, at the next webinar. Okay, there is a, um, yes, there is a question that we, we um, can respond, we can respond to Pauline. Uh, oh. Yes, so Pauline. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, yes, you, you, Pauline, you, you would have to go to the, uh, the website, thanaticethics.com and actually you can write to us, uh, thanaticethics uh, at gmail.com. So this is the collaborative address and you can you know, be put on the mailing list um, as well if you're not already uh, on the mailing list. So this is also valid for everyone. So thanaticethics.com for the website and thanaticethics at gmail.com for the, for the email. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your invitation. Most welcome. All your questions. Yeah. Okay.